Welcome to another Build Day TV episode. Today we're going to look at the hands-on building of an actual AWS Direct Connect connection. Uh, this is something I was really pleased we we're going to be able to show because I've never seen it done before. I've only looked at the result afterwards because you don't often get to deploy a, an actual Direct Connect connection. Now, I'd also like to introduce to you a new member of the Build Day TV team. Now, he's, he's new on camera because this is the first video he's been in, but he's been working very hard for us for about the last month on another big project. You'll see those videos coming out very shortly. Uh, the man who looks a little less tired than he did last week is Tom Green. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Thank you uh, for having me. Tom's been doing a lot of work on deploying workloads into public cloud and in particular into VMware solutions on public cloud. And part of this is connecting back to the CTO advisor data center. So we're sitting on top of a whole lot of CTO advisor infrastructure on this. And when we're building this direct connect connection out. So we've got a CTO advisor data center in Chicago and what connectivity do we have out of that? Uh, we have a 10 gig megaport connection uh, so we're connecting from the CTO advisor data center into Megaport. We're using that to do our WAN uh, layer two connection to the cloud providers. Right. And that's in, in the previous video where I talked about the theory behind and the, the sort of background of setting up Direct Connect. This is a partner hosted Direct Connect rather than being a bare connection. So uh, Tom has to do a combination of configuration uh, in the partner Megaport site as well as in the Direct Connect, but there's also configuration back on the on-premises switch that the on-premises networking team have set up. So at the end of this, we're going to be connecting to a jump host inside of VPC over that Direct Connect just to proof out the connections. Yeah, it should should be good. Yep, it's uh, if it works, then we know we have a connection into anything else we create routes for. Okay, well I'm going to hand over to Tom and he's going to drive. Uh, as you've, seen, you've said in many other uh, of your AWS videos, everything kind of starts with the VPC. You have to have a VPC in place in order to, to do networking or deploy any instances. So in the uh, CTO advisor AWS account, we already have a VPC set up in US East uh, two in Ohio. And then we also have a instance for the jump host that's already pre-deployed into a subnet into that. Uh, as you said, we've been using this pretty heavily for some other uh, testing. So we, we have a little bit already set up in AWS. Um, so the Direct Connect is going to connect from Chicago through Megaport into here. Uh, before we even get started with that, though, I'm going to create the uh, virtual private gateway so that we have something to connect into at the end. So it's, we're going to start with that. And just as we did with the VPN, the, the virtual private gateway is the entry point where the, the routes inside the VPC land and that abstracts out what's providing that connectivity back to our premises. Okay. So when we're going in here and creating our virtual private gateway, we're just gonna call it CTOA VPG. We're gonna use the Amazon default ASN. Uh, so with the ASN, it's already been configured on the uh, customer side or on our side in Chicago, we'd given that to the networking team. Uh, so we're going to use the Amazon default, but if we wanted to change it to something that fit you know, our preferences, we, we certainly could do that here. And so we have a detached uh, VPG. We're going to attach it into our VPC. We only have one. All right, and while that's baking, we'll go over to Megaport. So Megaport has a few different ways. You can do a direct, you know, actual physical connection, as you said, but it's a lot easier to go through and create uh, virtual interfaces. Uh, so it can partition out your, your connection and it doesn't consume the entire thing. So to do that, we're going to hit adding a connection. We're going to a cloud provider. And this is going to involve some bouncing back and forth. So, so and this part is specific to to Megaport, but it would work the, in a similar way on a different provider. Correct. Yeah. So, so this is uh, the click for click through Megaport. I'm sure there it, it would be a little different, but not too too different because they all interface similarly into Amazon. So we're going to click on AWS. Gives you a lot of warnings about 
how much it's going to cost, and you can do a hosted connection or a hosted virtual interface. So we're going to create the virtual interface. The filter is going to work here. Of course, USA. There we go. And as I said, that our uh, VPC is in US East 2. So we're going to, to click into Columbus, Ohio. Name the connection. So that was choosing an edge location that was nice and close to Columbus. Yeah. So it's not directly into Columbus itself. Yeah. Yeah, that was just, that's the code that they gave me, so. Yeah. We're gonna choose 100 meg for this connection for demonstration purposes. Uh, something to note, uh, you can not burst your speed up and down without causing a service disruption. So make sure that you've planned the bandwidth requirements uh, when this goes into production correctly, because otherwise you're going to, to lose connection to anything that's going across this uh, direct connect. So editing this connection information causes the AWS site to be destroyed and recreated with a loss of connectivity. Yeah. And so we're setting up a VLAN that was provided to us by our network administrators. So that's what's configured on our on-premises switch. Yep. Yeah. So A end is the is our on-premises. And so here we're gonna to have to bounce back and forth. So we're we're doing a private connection into our AWS. So the first thing they ask for is the AWS account ID. And the place where I always find this is in the direct connect um, screen on the console. So we're going to, to direct connect under networking and content delivery. And we click into, you see it from here, from this connection. Uh, this is a pre-provisioned direct connect that we, when we were working on a physical connection, but the AWS account's the same. Uh, there are other places you could find it in support. Um, there are other places around where you could find it. Hmm. So we're going into that, the customer ASN. So that's the uh, ASN for BGP configured on our on-premises uh, edge. Then the BGP authentication key is very important to get it right. It's a key that if you don't enter something here, it'll be automatically generated and it has to be configured also on your on-premises uh, firewall router, whatever you're using as the edge. Uh, if you don't have this correct and you can't, uh, can't set up the BGP pairing, will never, never come up. So we have that pre-generated. And then we have to set the each end of the, the BGP tunnel. So we have to say what IP address is on each end. So we can, just, yeah, apparently, number lock is not working today. So this, this is uh, all fairly standard um, BGP configuration of, of what the this direct link between AWS and our on-premises router is going to have as a configuration. All right. So. The customer, so it's us in our Chicago data center is dot is one seven two sixteen two five five dot six slash thirty, and the Amazon end is dot five. So that's matching up the information that our architect has given me. And now it just says this is how much you're going to pay. Thank you, Keith. Yes, CTO so you, advisor connectivity budget being spent. Yeah, and so. We have done this. There's a nice blue exclamation saying, you haven't actually ordered it yet. That's good because sometimes you might accidentally put 10 gigabit in there and you know, all of a sudden this is $2,500 instead of you know 118. And that's a little bit harder uh, explanation if you haven't had a chance to measure twice. So we're gonna go ahead and order it. And notice we haven't done anything direct connect related inside of the, the uh, AWS console except for finding the account number. So we need it. Yeah. Yeah. So what's happening, this little rocket ship um, icon here is actually going and communicating with our AWS account to uh, create the connection for us. So instead of us having to create it in AWS, we just have to go and approve it. 
to that's that's a nice difference compared to doing this with a, a customer managed. This is a good reason for using a partner to do the direct connect configuration. Yeah. So they've they've been doing it a long time and they know what to do. So now we just have to wait patiently or impatiently, uh, depending on who you are. For me, it's impatiently. Just set in refresh until the, the thing comes up. So yeah, it, it takes it a few minutes. Oh, see, look. There All it's I had to is turn it up. Click off. So it's turned up. It's in our virtual interfaces under the direct connect option. Uh, uh, so here's everything. It's got the VLAN we've configured and it's saying confirming. So what we're going to do is we're going to click in to see that. And we're going to I'm going to accept. I do see something that I'm curious about. It's the Amazon site ASN is different it's than the different default. From the, yeah. So I want to see what kind of. Uh... Oh, there it changed. Interesting. So yeah. it changed when we did the connection to the VPG. Yeah. So. So in that that except you were choosing which VPG this virtual interface should land on, or which virtual private gateway on, essentially which VPC we're going to connect to. Yeah, yeah. So you have to choose a connection, whether it's physical or that. So we're since we're using virtual private gateway, we can get into one VPC uh, instead of using one connection into multiple. But yeah, you know, that's the the way that we've chosen to do it in this instance. Mm -hmm. So now it'll take a few minutes, you know, 10 or so for the state to come up from pending to connected. And then it'll take another five or so minutes for BGP to negotiate. Well, you know, let's, let's leave that to um, work amongst itself because if we were doing this for real, we would uh, make that time pass faster but by going and doing one of the other items on our to-do list. Yep. So once again, Jeffrey is gonna magic us through time. And time has passed. Thank you, Jeffrey. And we have a successful connection. What have we got in that status? What does it, that status mean down there? So the state is available, which means that the connection between Megaport and AWS is negotiated. Everything is good. It's, it's sending packets. And then if we scroll over a little bit, we've got BGP, maybe. There you go. We've got the BGP status is up, which means that the CTO advisor, Chicago, uh, router has negotiated all of its routes with um, AWS and vice versa. So anything should be able to communicate. There's a few extra steps we need to take, but we'll we'll do that whenever we look at our instance. Okay. So we have our direct connect up. We just got to do things with a VPC then. Right. So so we're going to need to go to the VPC again. We were there once, but we need to go back. The reason being, we need to now we now know we have a connection to that uh, virtual private gateway, so we just need a route to say send traffic that way. So I'm into the VPC, going down to route tables. We only have one that we're using. It's only got a route to the internet and our local route. We're not using a net gateway or anything on it, so the Public instance. Internet. Yep. So the instance that we've created actually doesn't have a public IP. So it, you can't get to it anyway, except for private. So we're going to try this out. So 10.0.0 slash eight will get anywhere outside of the AWS VPC. So that's our entire network, our entire CTO advisor data center WAN. Yep. And we're going to send all that traffic out the virtual private gateway, we only have one. So there is now a route set. Traffic's going to get out. Let's go to our EC2 instance. We're going to check the security groups and we're going to check and make sure everything's going to work for us here. So here's our EC2 instance. And it's going to allow three, you know, RDP. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you can see up above, there's no public DNS or public IP address on this host. So it can only be accessed over the, the 10.x network. Yeah. So something more secure would be to, to 
ratchet that down if we mm. wanted to go that far. We're going to see what happens here. Grab the private IP address. Yep. So I went here and I copied that. And I opened PuTTY whenever I was supposed to open RDP. Because you've chosen to have a Windows machine in here. I've, I've done lots of the demos with a, a Linux machine because they're quicker to deploy. Yeah, I, I wanted to do it for RDP mm. for a few reasons, for consistency from some other tests that we've been doing. And um, because Windows is, you know, I wanted to show that experience as well. Yeah. yeah. So I hit connect and it's popping up with an authentication screen, which That's is a sign. usually a good sign. However, we need to get the password. I'm sure this is very similar to what you've shown for connecting to a Linux instance, but for Windows, if you hit connect, it says, here's the private IP. If we had a public IP, it would also give that. Here's the username and you have to get the password by uploading your um, key file actually isn't that one. That's for a different demo. That's for a different demo. Hey, you so. know, I, I haven't actually shown this part in any of our videos because we oh. haven't looked at connecting to a Windows instance and having to decrypt the administrator password rather than using that pre-shared key as, as the authentication. Yeah, it's a little different. It's kind of neat how they are still using that same security mechanism even if Windows doesn't natively um, expect a pre-shared key. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to decrypt the password. Copying it to the clipboard. If all things go well, it's looking good. That's a very positive sign. Looks very much like a Windows login inside of our VPC over our Direct Connect. Yes, it is. It's see. As you may have noticed, I've got a lot of different tabs. I'm still using just Windows remote uh, desktop you know, connection, but uh, here is the jump box that's on the um, CTO it's advisor the network, the 10.0. And then this is the private network in our VPC 10.255.68. Great, great. So that was like beginning to end with the Megaport configuration already in place, with that actual partnership with Megaport already in place, that beginning to end was like 20 minutes to provision that direct connect into a single VPC. Yep. Yeah, it was uh, pretty pretty straightforward. And if you have uh, good resources and it can be, you know, click for click easy, but then whenever you start calling BGP easy, sometimes that uh, proves itself to be wrong. Yeah, it becomes the uh, the quality of the networks teams involved is becomes very important. Yep. And that's proofed out deploying a direct connect connection from our Chicago data center into an AWS based VPC using a partner. Uh, if we had done a uh, an actual dedicated 10 gig Ethernet connection in without using the partner managed connection, we would have had several days to weeks of wait for circuits to be provisioned. But because we we're using a service provider here, um, that managed connectivity was so fast and easy to deploy. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tom. That was great. Um, this is episode 8B of my series, uh, the series on AWS VPC networking foundations. Uh, I've got one more episode to go. I've got one more episode looking at what was going to be best practices, but turns out to be all about costs. So it'll about, be about VPC networking costs and watch for that in a week. Stay tuned for more episodes of Build Day TV.